For this project, you're gonna need some sort of framed panel. It can be oval like this one, it can be square, whatever you want. If you can't find a panel, I got this one at Hobby Lobby. If you can't find a panel that you like, I might, you might consider going to maybe a um, frame shop, or a Goodwill, a thrift store, anything like that, finding an oval frame, and then just putting some chipboard or something like that in it that you can you know, paint or uh, cover with paper. You could do that. You could also use an old silver platter. I know that a lot of times in the thrift stores, I'm always finding old silver platters. You can paint them any color you want. You can use those in your decor all year round, uh, depending on what color you paint it. So just, you know, whatever is going to fit your style in your home and uh, your particular decor for this project. So for me, uh, the white is going to be good. I'm going to go ahead and probably add a little bit of the Lost Shadow gray uh, to bring out a little more detail in this. But other than that, it's going to stay just as it is. And then I wanted to use a saying from Song of Solomon that I have liked since we were first married. And it says, this is my beloved and this is my friend. Now, obviously it doesn't say that here, but I was just trying to kind of uh, place the letters so that I could see if the saying would fit before I went ahead and gave this project a go. So the, this is my, and this is my, are all from the alphanumeric emporium alphabet and uh, these dies that i'm using are obviously from the tim holtz sizzix 2023 everyday release for this year and so the emporium letters are the smaller ones that i will be using on the project and then the larger ones for the words beloved and friend and possibly the ampersand are from the bulletin uh letters and if you didn't know this, uh, when we get our sample dies to be able to make the samples, we don't get artwork with them. And so we run off the artwork to put in. So that's why sometimes my artwork has white around it and sometimes it doesn't quite fit. And yeah. sometimes like this one, I ran off the same alphabet, which is Emporium. And uh, so I need to obviously run off bulletin so that I have both of those, but it's okay. And then the other die that I'm going to be using will be the True Love die. And I'm not gonna use it with the chocolates. I really just wanted some hearts. So there are three hearts, or actually, if, if you think about it, there's probably four or five hearts that you can cut from this die set that are large. And then you have all the little chocolate hearts as well. In here, teeny tiny ones, all of these fun little you know, heart shapes that are in there. But as far as the big ones go, you have the solid heart shape. So this will cut out a solid heart because this is the back and the, the top. And I'm not gonna be using this one. I was just using it to block out my project. Uh, the one that I plan on using is this one, which is kind of the, the, it's supposed to look like the sides of the box here to make it look like the sides are coming up. And so that's this one. And so then you would have kind of a funny shaped little heart, but I think that's cool. It's got those little pointy shapes. And so I'm going to be cutting this out to use two of those. And then for a little added interest or to tie in with the lettering, I may be also using this one, which this one, if you look carefully, just cuts out that thin layer that would be like the top edge of that box. Okay, that's what that's supposed to represent is the top of the side of the box. And so when you cut that out, you're not only gonna get that thin heart, but you're also gonna get that little heart inside, which I think is smaller, yeah, see? So it's just a little smaller than, than the, the top of that heart. So you get one, two, although this one has the center cut out, then three, which is a little funny, and then four, and then the inside is five. So you get five big hearts cut from this. And um, now that I've told you that, I have a project that I'm gonna be doing with all of these uh, that I'll be posting later on. So I really wanted to put the hearts just kind of intertwined and I was actually planning on doing them this way, but then it was kind of hard to get the friend 
going across. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not, but uh, I may be putting the ampersand in there. So it says, this is my beloved and this is my friend. Uh, or I may just change it and say, this is my beloved and my friend. We'll see how that works out, but it will be some, some form of that quote and the hearts will be somewhere over here with either an ampersand in them or and you may have both or may only have some flowers or it may have the ampersand and some flowers in the hearts over here. So those are the dies I'm going to be using, but I have a couple of other things I wanted to tell you about. And that is that I am using three types of distress paper. I'm using the distress black heavy stock that is kind of suede feeling. I am using the watercolor cardstock, distress watercolor, and distress craft. So these are the three papers I'm going to be using. I'm going to be coloring the watercolor with sponge sugar and a little bit of lost shadow. I am going to be embossing the craft stock with the woven texture fade and probably a little bit of frayed burlap to go down and to make it look like burlap because my decor has a lot of burlap, gray, uh, white, pink, and black. So I don't use red in my Valentine decor. So let's go ahead and get started on this and see how it works out. So I'm inviting you to come along and let's get making. makers I'm at the point where I am ready to start adhering things to the plaque so I thought I'd stop and show you where we're at so I have the two hearts that I cut out and what I decided to do after I started making the um, burlap from the woven is I took my sponge sugar oxide and just kind of went over the rough surface of it so that I could pull in some of the pink. So that's what I cut these out of. And then for the Emporium letters, let's see if I can pick this up. As you can see, oh, when you cut them out, there are little bits that fall out. And then what I went through and did was I cut it twice. So I took out the punch outs and you can just leave it like that if you want or you can cut it out again and then reposition some of the punch outs in there and so that's what I did so I cut them out of the burlap with the pink and also the black heavy stock so that's the this is my and this is my and then for Beloved, this is going to be the opposite, but I cut the letters out of the pink and Lost Shadow. And then 
when you cut the bulletin out, you get a letter and then you get the outside piece. So you can use either the outside piece or the letter, or you can use them together. And so as you can see, I took the outside of the pink off and the outside of the black off and I put the black as an outline. And then, you know, I actually have a second set uh, that I won't be using, but that's how the lettering works. I have my mini brushstroke flowers done. So I used this big one and I used the roses, used this leaf, and I also used this leaf. So you can see I have, these are the roses and then this leaf that's kind of with them. And over here, I have the larger one with this leaf. I decided to go with the ampersand over here. And as you can see, I, I cut this one out, but I just didn't like the way it looked. So I went ahead and decided I wanted just some blank space there and to go ahead and do this. So I'm not sure that this is exactly how all the flowers are gonna stay, but I kind of need to start getting some things stuck down so that then I can arrange flowers to finish up. So I hope that is a clear enough explanation of all of my substrates that I used to cut everything out. And the flowers and everything are just from watercolor uh, cardstock that I colored. And I did everything with oxides this time instead of distress inks. I'm a distress ink, original distress ink girl, but I decided to go ahead and use some oxides with this one. So that's what I did. And for the letters here, after I did this, I decided that I wanted to pull in some of the brown. So I did flick them with frayed burlap. And so I think that it kind of, you know, pulls in some of the brown a little bit better. All right. I am now going to start sticking things down and we should be finished. This is the finished product. Everything is secured. It's in place, ready to hang on the wall. And I really love it. It is the perfect color scheme for my Valentine decor. This is what I use. I don't use any red. And so this is gonna fit perfectly in my living room. Can't wait to go hang it up. The uh, I didn't make any changes on any of this. So the hearts and the inside of the Emporium letters are uh, with, made with the craft paper, woven texture fade, and that little bit of sponge sugar. And then the Tim Holtz Everyday Sizzix that I used, just a reminder, I used the Brushstroke Mini Flowers for all of my florals on here and the leaves. For the hearts, I used True Love and I just used the portion that would make up the sides of the candy box. So you don't even have to use everything. You can just use part of it. And so I just used the portion that would make the sides. And then I used both of the newest releases of the alphanumeric line and that would be Bulletin and Emporium to make my saying. And then to finish it off, since I used watercolor, just watercolor cardstock and oxides to color all of the paper that uh, I used for the flowers and for the words beloved and friend, I decided that in order to hang it up, I wanted to have some scrunchy ribbon to tie it all together. And since I have some Hug Snug seam binding left over, still some rayon seam binding. I went ahead and colored it with Lost Shadow, Sponge Sugar, and Frayed Burlap, the same colors that I used all throughout this make. And I wanted to keep it consistent, so I used my oxide sprays to color the ribbon and then dry it. And it is ready to hang up in my living room. So thank you so much for following along on this quick tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making this quick home decor piece. If I didn't make any 
you know, anything that was, wasn't maybe clear or that you may have questions about, please feel free to contact me through my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com. I will be happy to answer them as soon as I possibly can. And at this point, I think I want to wish you a very creative day.